All right, it is Sunday, 16 January. Bitcoin's holding, holding at 43K. ETH is holding at 3,300. It's showing green, uh, up very slightly. Bitcoin dominance is at the old 40%, which is a good thing. Oh, we just went red. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> hold, hold, hold. Like I say, time in the market beats time in the market, but it's such a volatile domain, this whole crypto thing. If you don't mind paying short-term cap gains, then you can maybe make some money. I don't know. A lot of people say they make money, but in life I've learned, and I'm sure you have learned this too, people that have money or made money, just stay quiet. They have that confidence, they have that success, and they know they have the money. They don't need to go out and uh, make uh, price prediction videos <laughs> like me, I'm broke, right? They don't need to go out and make videos on uh, crypto and all this stuff because they don't need to. And when I see some of these guys pushing uh, crypto courses for like, you know, a thousand bucks a course or something, I'm just like, if you guys are so successful and know exactly how the market runs or the strategies and how to make money, dollars to donuts, if you were actually successful, you would not be wasting time making YouTube videos to push a course for a thousand bucks because you wouldn't need the money. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like you're shilling too much for courses, trying to sell stuff. What if you just did it yourself and it was successful? You wouldn't need to be pushing courses to sell stuff. You'd already have the wealth. And the people that are wealthy and have money, just stay quiet about it. And most guys uh, you know, that are truly zen-like down earth and are wealthy just drive basic cars or basic Toyota you know, Camry or your RAV4 or whatever, Highlander, they just drive those cars and they keep modest. They got the financial independence, they got the wealth, and they don't need to be out there, hey, you want to have a Lambo in a garage and all these uh, Instagram girls on your, on your shoulder? Nah, 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 nah. That's, again, come on, folks. Don't go for that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is just a Sunday stream rant. What are we doing today? I am stuck. I'm sorry, guys. I'm stuck on this Raptorium thing, man. Yeah, so I had an issue with uh, Windows killing the EXE because it thought it was a threat. I had to go and say, no, it's not, put it back in. And the weird thing is XM rig was running for a month, at least a month, a month or two. And it decided all of a sudden on all my rigs to say, hey, this is a threat. That's weird to me, especially when I did not update Windows. I don't get it. So we're back up and running. Uh, I have half on, over, half on O11 data running i don't get i'm not i'm not making much not like some other players i'm just a small town small town small time guy with a couple rigs cpu rigs and a couple gpu rigs that's it but you know better than nothing it's a hobby right so the goal here is to get the remaining coins my 20 raptorium payout on uh 011 data move that to my wallet and then flip everything over to Supernova, which I have right here working. I got a couple rigs working here. And I'm going to stay on Supernova. I heard on another channel, I can't, yeah, today or yesterday, 011 data devs may stop the pull at the end of the month. I don't need to worry about that. Even if they're talking about it, that means they're not crazy about doing this anymore. So jump ship, go to this place that's uh, going to stand by what they're doing and just, you don't have to worry about it, right? I don't want to come in one day and say, oh my God, everything's down. What's happening? API error or whatever on the pool, you know, come over here and see that's down. I'm just going to move right to Supernova. Supernova has a US stratum right here and it's been paying out. It pays out right here, anonymous payouts. I'm doing anonymous. Happen as soon as your balance reaches 10 RTM. 24 times 7, and it's only a 0.5% fee. And it goes to my Raptorian wallet, and I don't mind all these transactions. I would prefer to set a high threshold, like every 500 RTM payout, just to cut down on the transactions. But with the software I have in the wallet dumping the files, it just imports it, and I don't have to do really anything manual, just upload to my uh, coin tracking.info for tax purposes, and that's it. So I'm not too worried about all these transactions. All right, so we have Raptorium split. I also have the iNode Z smart nodes working. So when I get enough Raptorium in my wallet, I dump it up to the iNodes. 
I was mining directly to my holding address in inotes. Again, I'm, I'm an idiot. So I don't know if I couldn't find a way that they track at that all the deposits into the uh, holding address. So I kind of backed off that because I need to be able to track for reporting purposes. And it just seemed like I see they track payments, your rewards, but I don't see where they track the deposits into the holding address. Uh, it may be TBD coming down the road, but I don't want to have to worry about it. Stick with what you know. So just to make uh, again, reporting is the key. I don't want to have to say I ah, come next year how many thousands of RTM transactions did I move to the smart notes? I have no idea. I don't want to go through that. Oh boy. All right. So we got that. I looked at some ASICs today for uh, the script algorithm and I read some reviews on Amazon and some had some decent pricing, but reviews are not the greatest. And uh, then the one site I saw had them for 1200 bucks for the 500, I think uh, hash, and uh, it, they were all used, refurbished. And that makes me nervous a little bit. And then even on uh, Amazon, the reviews were, the guy bought it new. And it was obviously re-put together and was obviously not new. It was probably returned or done, pulled off someone's farm. And they repurchased it or whatever. And they just repackaged it and sold it. And that was just a red flag. It seems like... The greed factor is so large on those that ASIC community. Just stay away from it. I think you're, you're going to get either scalp prices or equipment that's not new. Stuff that's uh, duct taped together and buyer beware. I don't know. It's just a big turn off. Spidey sense. The Spidey sense tingled on that. And I said, I'm out. I'm not doing this. I'd rather buy a couple of Ryzen 9s. You know? Let me know. I'm just curious. Though. I mean, that's my perception. Let me know if you guys have any good experiences with any of those ASICs. Again, the noise is a big turnoff too. The power and heat are a plus, but the noise, come on. I don't have a sound room to put these things in. And I know if you have it somewhere outside or in a garage, neighbors may get upset. They say, what is that constant leaf blower sound? <laughs> and you just don't need that. You don't need people getting in your face about your hobby or your business. Oh, see, what else do we have going on here? Uh, let's see. I'm waiting again. Like I said, for my payouts, nothing yet. I'm at 14, like six more, and I'm going to be done with 011 data. Get off that puppy, and wait for my payout there. I'm also I'm also mining ETH, and getting paid out in Bitcoin on two miners. I'm going to see how that goes. I only have two laptops running on that guy. I love my laptops. They are kicking butt. They are just set and forget. So let's go over here. To, oh, we got we actually have a nice cool day down here. Let's go over here. Oh, let's check what the temperatures are. These are 3080 Ti's. We, oh, we got a 90. Look at that 90 hash on a 3080 Ti. I've seen more of those lately. There's what it's running. A little hot on one of the memories there, but under 70 Celsius. I am very happy with that. I actually have the tent open because it's so cool outside. It's awesome. It's like a storm front is going up to the north, mid-Atlantic and up, South Carolina up, and it's hitting the south here, and it's awesome. It's finally some less less humid, uh, hot air. So here it is. This is my shebang. It's not as schmancy-wancy as some of the other guys you uh, watch, but it, it does the job. Again, I'm not... I, I tidy cables up to the best, let's say, to the most practical because I know I'm going to move these things. I know I'm going to take them off to clean them every month and uh, clean the fins, the fans, and blow out the dust. So I don't want to go super nuts like, an, like a server lab and tuck every cable and tie wrap everything because it's just become a hassle. And airflow is fine. Airflow, airflow works. Here's a 3080 Ti farm, LHR. People hate these things. I've learned to hate them and love them, but they are what they are. They're giving, they're, it's skewing out over 500 mega ash right now. Just this, this just rig. And uh, with the uh, T-Rex miner running it with the absolute core clock setting kicked in, it dropped the power consumption a bit. As you can see, there's the powers. And some of those, the bottom three are the ROG Strix cards, which are power-hungry little monsters. They used to be in a 310-watt range, so it saved me a little bit of juice. And they also burn hot, so that middle one's been burning hot. He might be, uh, he might be up for um, um, some thermal paste or pad replacing eventually. He might be the one I dropped too. It's like 
you know, you have a baby. Don't drop the baby. That was my baby. I dropped it. I went, oh, man. But it works. Maybe burning a little hot. But there's that. There's the old motherboard down there churning away. Here's my first PC ever I built in 2014. It was a gaming PC. And there it is. And that actually, that thing with the ASRock motherboard is rock solid from 2013, man. The older technology, it almost seems to be the best. I mean, I was able to hook up six of these totally different GPUs, no problem at all, none. You know, I got a one to four splitter in there. What do I got two? I got one. Oh, wait. Oh, I got two. All right, I got two splitters in there. Awesome. Two splitters, and I got about three PCIe slots. Yeah, mix of cables, 18 gauge, some with the mesh wrapping, and there is my famous $14 one by two inch wood rack with uh, decking screws. That thing's awesome, because <laughs> I can pick that up. If this, the only thing holding this in there, the tether is the power cable. Everything else, it could be, and there's a, there's a Cat5 cable, but I could put a Wi-Fi USB dongle in there and just carry this thing around like a suitcase and move it anywhere in the house. But uh, this has a mixture of 6600 XTs and NVIDIA 1660, 3060, a bunch of that cards, and I'm running two different mining softwares, MB Miner for the AMD cards, and T-Rex Miner for the NVIDIA cards, and it works great, no problem. It's pretty cool to try that and see it works. And the processor, oh, I got an Intel on that puppy. Got an Intel little processor, your cheapy, weepy one, probably under 100 bucks, and uh, it's, it's working rock solid, man. Little wood rack, like I said. I got one of those Kingston SATA drives, and what I, what I found out recently, what I discovered I like now is those M2 SDD drives that just pop in that M2 slot. It's one less, well, two cable, two less cables, uh, one less SATA power cable for the SATA drive and uh, the actual SATA cable going into the motherboard. Two cables minus a SATA Kingston drive, and it cleans it up nicely. All right, enough of this. I do have room here yet. I might put another wood rack. If I, you know, I'm going to build one more. And probably maybe make it all 6600 XTs. I don't know yet. I don't want to invest too much. And the reason is, here's my CPU farm. Two Ryzen 5s up top. That's a Red Devil 6600. Red Devil 6600 just got that one. There's a... 3070 Ti, the dreaded 3070 Ti or LHR everyone hates, I guess. But I'm getting 59 hash out of it now, thanks to a, one of the viewers wrote in and said, dude, do this, blam, 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 and I tried it and went, blammo, it worked. It just jacked up the hash rate for me <clears throat> and, kept, and kept it very stable, too. It kept crashing before, so my clock settings were obviously hosed. And uh, it was great. That's why I love this community and, and making the videos because I'm learning from everybody. I don't know half this crap, right? I'm learning as I go. And I've only been in this since September, so there you go. Uh, let's see, what else we got? This one is the new 6600 XT, bare bones, no metal backing. This is what I like. This is a power color, and I think I got it for fives. I will not buy 6600 XT over 550, because once you add in tax and maybe shipping on Newegg or whatever, uh, it's just almost not worth it. Newegg's been a win for me lately. I never. I've only had questions about Newegg in the past, but lately I've been scoring big on the 6600s. One is in there for $4.99 and one's for $5.04. I kind of put those in my cart and waited like 10 minutes, but then they sold out. I went, ugh. So if you see a 6600 XT for under $5.50, you might want to get it. I don't know. Depends what you want to do with it. I don't know. There's the nice metal backing, all the fancy LEDs versus it just works. And this one actually gets the best hash rate by like a fraction to like 0.5 over the fancy schmancy ones. So, like I say, uh, stuff, not fluff, right? Just give me a card that works. I don't mind if it has a board exposed. Big whoop. All right, this is Ryzen 9 3900. I got my, uh, what is this one? Airs game. I bought a bunch of those Airs game 750 watt. They're bronze, but who cares, right? I got like four of them. They were only 59 bucks. Uh, I also have some EVGAs I pick up. I think I got that one free from GameStop because I had a bunch of gift certificates. And there's some more, another Airs game. Airs game, 
Corsair. I don't remember. That one was pricier. That was 109 or 99 bucks. You know, it does the same. I don't, so whatever. You know, I'm in the saving money. Ryzen 9 3900, Ryzen 9 3900, Ryzen 9 3900. And my favorite motherboard is this one. I like this one. I don't know if they're making it anymore. Uh, and that is it. The plan now, two more GPUs. I just want to fill up these motherboards with GPUs just to say I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think they're going to be 6600 XTs like this type, just bare bones, blah, 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 right there. And then I'll maybe just take one of these motherboards, one of these guys, maybe just one of the Ryzen 5s right here, put a splitter on it, and then make a rack with all the 6600 XTs and put it in in the old grow tent. I have a fan off on the grow tent because it's nice and cool out and I have the doors open, the air is coming through like a nice little wind tunnel. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I don't know, nothing else going on. Here's a laptop I'm running. This is a nice Dell laptop with a 3060 in it. That thing is running CPU mining on Raptorium and GPU mining using T-Rex. There you go. And there's some junk. Not junk. There's some fans I just found no use for. And I got this little vacuum cleaner clean free from GameStop again with a free gift certificate. Uh, it works all right. It gets in the, in the grow tent and around, and it can va vacuum the fan blades off the... Uh, the uh, GPUs. All right, that is all I got. I just want to give a little update. Uh, like I said, I dealt with the issue today of the XM Marine being, uh, you know, triggered as a threat, and I'm hopefully that I'll to, hopefully I did that right. I was able to go in and set exclusions on the folder where I have all my mining software, so hopefully it won't detect it again and kick it. Uh, that was kind of annoying. Uh, part again of maintaining your own farm. I'm still considering looking at the cloud-based crypto farming, like on River and some of the other ones I mentioned in another video. Uh, those are overseas ones, so they make me nervous. Uh, so maybe the River one once they come through. The River financial one's different because you go buy the equipment for Bitcoin mining, but they house it, maintain it, service it. And the only question is, well, what if you're done? How do you, how do you unload this thing? You know, or is it a lease or own? I, sometimes it might just be best to rent it so um, that's a big concern. You're buying a depreciating item, and then if you're done with it, are you stuck with it? I don't know. It's, a, it's kind of an iffy question right now. Yeah, so that's it, guys. What are you guys up to with your mining? What are you guys going to be doing? Again, we're kind of in a holding pattern with this crypto. Uh, I think a lot of people are accumulating. A lot of the whales are accumulating. I'm sure a lot of the big financial guys are accumulating. Tomorrow is a, tomorrow is a federal holiday, so I think the banks and investment places are closed. So we'll probably still stay in the, uh, what, 43 range, 3,300 for the crypto. And that's a big concern, too. I'm just amazed that the crypto is so tied with the stock market and the financial sector. It got kind of one little red spidey sense flag going off because I thought this stuff was supposed to be uh, bulletproof, independent of the uh, financial system. But we'll see. All right, that's enough, guys. Sunday ramble. A Sunday ramble. Look at this guy. That was kind of cool. I think, I, have, I forget what this guy is. You know the problem with these GPUs? They don't really say on the outside what they are. They have their brand, and that's about it. It's an NVIDIA. It's a 3060 Ti. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will be back. Let me know what you guys are up to, and we'll talk later. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching. Boom. 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 Boom.